I'm Mike Cooper from PhD Worldwide. Uh, we've just been having a uh, seminar here with Jason Silver, uh, which was great, at Lions Health. I'm Jason Silver. I'm the host of Brain Games on the National Geographic Channel. I'm also a media artist, and I have a web series called Shots of Awe. What's going on now is that you know we've seen the world change with information technology in the last 25 years, and that's because of the exponential rate at which these technologies emerge. Now biology is becoming an information technology too. Gene sequencing, for example, is going three times faster than Moore's law. You gave a great example about how it used to cost hundred thousand dollars, you know. Yeah. And so you see yeah. these advances happening so fast that people don't yeah. realize that we have to sort of throw away all the models of how we do healthcare now. In the introduction, what we were trying to do was to sort of like root some of this in what's happening today and you know really the opportunities that are happening for healthcare are just so enormous they're so immense if you look at many of the other industries that have been completely turned on their head by the digital revolution you get a sense of what's possible for, for healthcare I mean just look at retail look at music look at photography you know it's just been absolutely transformed as an industry and you know healthcare just seems to be on the cusp of that. So there's a lot of regulatory issues mm -hmm. that they've got to kind of like get over for that. But, you know, we, we gave some examples, we showed some examples today of how the Gates Foundation has uh, overcome, uh, you know, geographical issues in Nigeria by using technology. I was going a lot further out uh, conceptually, but um, actually when it comes to the time frames, it's actually closer than people think. I mean, that's kind of the paradox is that because of the exponential trends, you know, right around the corner we have quantified self-revolution, we have sensors into everything, but then like right around the next corner, because of the exponential leaps, you have lab on a chip technologies on your smartphone diagnosing you better than 10 board certified doctors. And then one more step after that, you have like turning off genes and turning on certain genes, you know, like, and then one step above that, you have like nanobots in your body attacking cancer cells. So because of exponential, it's not going to take 100 years or 500 years, it's going to take 20 years, you know. This is what people, you know, it's hard to wrap their heads around. So you kind of kind of dissolve people's mental models, and that's why I think media is important. Stories are important. You need new yeah. stories. You need new yeah. media to you know, create an inception that will spread in people's brains. And that's kind of what we were trying to evoke here today. And, and it, you know, and it's not science fiction. I mean, if you just think, one of the other examples that we, we right. gave today was just about all the human data in history right. to date, up to 2003, is five exabytes. Today we generate that amount of data every two days, right. you know, which is just unbelievable. And if you just think about all the wearable tech, you know, diagnosing contact lenses, yeah. lavatories, you know, wristbands that are going to kind of like tell you when to take medicine and, you know, the exact state of your health at any moment of the day, the amount of data is just going to explode. So, you know, I mean, all of this is rooted absolutely in reality. 100%. Well, we have linear local brains and we live in a world of exponential change. So we have to make do with this new reality and we have to adjust to it, you know. But human beings have always been afraid of transformative technologies. I mean, when the technology of writing was invented, it's been, it's been reported that Socrates and other intellectuals in their heyday said that writing was going to atrophy our brains because if we wrote things down, we wouldn't memorize things. So, you know, when TV first came out, that's going to rot your brain. Radio is going to rot your brain. Everything's going to rot your brain until it becomes normal, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's important for people to realize that this is only going to be beneficial. I mean, yeah. You might have that kind of Luddite backlash, the same way you have the crazies that are talking anti-vaccines, you know? But I think the evidence sort of far outweighs the crazies and they get kind of pushed to the side. And anybody who's rational and who sees the data and who sees what's possible will realize that this is just a human story. It's what we've always done. We overcome boundaries. That's what we do. We see limitations and we subjugate them with our intellect, with our neocortex. Yeah. And that is worth celebrating and that story is worth putting out there. And just an example of how it kind of like becomes normal. I mean, bear in mind, the fastest growing group of internet users and social media users are the over 55s. There you go. You know? So, you know, I mean, it just be kind of like becomes normal and, you know, it, it, it becomes accepted. It's a little bit more for some people than others, but, you know, generally it's completely becomes accepted. Yeah. So, like, we have, I have no doubt. So. Oh, yeah. I love those examples that talk about uh, the era pre aviation before we figured that out. And there's all these wonderful quotes you can find of some of the smartest establishment figures at the time saying, man will never achieve flight. It's impossible. It just yeah. cannot happen. Yeah. You know, it's just like, come on, man. It's only impossible until it's done. Or well, flat earths. Yeah. Flat earth. Is, right. You know. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. 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 We're just trying to inspire people to open their minds.
leverage these opportunities. So.